So, Phyrexia all will be one. Um, coming out like next pre-release for us is next. That time of recording is next week. Uh, spoilers are out. We've seen everything that the glorious faction has to offer. There is a lot of like this stuff's gonna break command. This stuff's gonna break every set. Everything gets a toy, and it's great. So, um, as far as it goes, uh, we'll be going over story, uh, sealed cards, cards that are really good and sealed. Mm -hmm. Just a couple. And then, uh, and the cycles, as well as just a lot of commander cards that we like. Yeah, there's, to be absolutely honest, all the planes walk really good. Oh my gosh, so much in here. So, let's get right into it. Uh, I'm your host, Isaiah. I'm Chris. And this is Locked Loot. Okay, before before we get into this, because so something about uh, Magic the Gathering that I've noticed is a lot of people don't know the stories of the sets. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are simple and can be summed up pretty well. The cards give a little bit of guidance, but not a lot. So uh, Phyrexia All Will Be One comes off of the heels of Brothers War. Mm -hmm. In Brothers War, uh, Teferi goes back in time. Uh, learns how to create and use a Silex, mm -hmm. and then Sahili attacks the Silex, mm -hmm. and they decide to take it to New Phyrexia to bomb the shit out of it. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, Silex is like very powerful, like weapons of mass destruction. Yep. They're worried about uh the Phyrexians being able to reach out into other planes through a world tree. Mm -hmm. Uh, so their plan is to detonate it at the center of the plane. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it, Phyrexia works in layers. Yep. Each kind of color has its own layer and its own controller, and they yep. need to get to the bottom, the heart of, heart of Mirrodin, uh, and what's called the Realm Breaker to destroy it. Yeah. Uh, the only problem is the second they planes walk there, they realize there's a barrier mm -hmm. that they just walk through, and the entire group gets splintered. Mm. So you have like Kaido, the Wandering Emperor, who's not able to stabilize her spark, so she goes away. Um. And Nahiri land on top. Mm -hmm. uh, so Phyrexia, you've got the five colors, and then you've got an additional layer that Phyrexia built. Mm -hmm. The Phyrexians built the monumental facade. Um, and so they meet up with the Marin Resistance, go down. Uh, the groups kind of meet together, and uh, people start getting infected. That's where we get the completed Planeswalkers. The Planeswalkers that get uh, completed throughout, uh, Nahiri gets infected early and she gets completed later on mm -hmm. uh nissa shows up at the very end fully completed uh jace gets infected somewhere along the way and ha uh, gets completed at the end uh completed at the end oh, okay so they go through the layers mm -hmm. fighting their way through get to the bottom two realm breakers and are about to detonate the thing mm -hmm. And then suddenly, you, you know the story. Um, you're about to use a uh, potentially world-ending device mm -hmm. as, as a hero, yep. and and here comes the uh, philosophical debate about the good and evil of using this weapon. Yeah, bring on Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Jace, knowing he's gonna die anyway, says he wants to use it mm -hmm. because he's already gonna be completed. So mm -hmm. he chooses to use it. Um, they're not sure if it'll destroy New Phyrexia, mm -hmm. or if it'll just, like... Piss it off. Well, no, not piss off, but they want to destroy Realm Breaker. Mm -hmm. That's the big thing. Um, so, they decide, you know, we need to... <laughs> so, Elsbeth, in her infinite wisdom, she's not in the set. She's there, but she's not in the set. She's not one of the planeswalkers. Mm -hmm. She decides that maybe they shouldn't risk they find out that the the roots have already touched other planes. Mm -hmm. that Elspeth finds out that the roots of Rumbreaker have already touched other planes. Yeah. So there's now the question of, okay, if we detonate this thing, destroy the tree, burn the entire tree um, down to the roots, will it destroy the other planes with it? Yeah. Because they don't know what planes have been touched. Yeah. Um, so the question, Elspeth 
decides that's a bad idea. Jace is like, well, if we destroy a bunch of planes, if we destroy... Okay, so we're all right destroying one. So what about Ted? Are we okay with that? <laughs> Jace decides, yes, we're okay with destroying 10. Uh, Elspeth decides, we're not okay with destroying 10. Uh, uh, kills Jace, stabs him. Well, I don't think she actually kills him, but stabs him. Stabs him with Luxior, her blade. Mm. Uh, grabs the Silex, and Planes walks away. Right, so she just doomed the she, entire plane of existence. She detonated the thing in the blind eternity, so we have no idea what that did. We don't even know if she's alive. Yeah. Uh, in the end, we lost Jace, Vraska, uh, Nissa, Nahiri, Luca, and Luca to Phyrexia. They have been completed by uh, them. And, of course, you know, all the rest of them. Now, Phyrexia has a path to a bunch of different planes. And Elspeth and Oliver Infinite Wisdom just basically kicked the hornet's nest and gave them, hey, look, here's some shiny new toys. Mm -hmm. She essentially said, you know, Planeswalker's a big threat to a new Phyrexia. What if we give them five more? Yeah, exactly. <sighs> Honestly, I'm like, I, I, it's funny, they keep losing. Everybody keeps losing, you know. They're, they're... Dominari United was a stalemate. Brothers War is Brothers War. They go to new Phyrexia to finally get a win and lose. Uh, who is the root cause of this? Elspeth? I blame Elspeth. Elspeth just out here handing out L's to her own team. But, so she's like Italy in the Second World War. Uh, but so, okay, so that's the story of the set going into uh, March of the Machine, which will be the next set. Huh. Um, okay, story wise, yeah, we lost again. <laughs> Think about this. We lost on Call of Duty. We lost on Kamigawa. Taking L after L after we, L. We fought to a stalemate on uh, Dominaria. We just lost on New Phyrexia. And that, that may have been the nail in the coffin, but no, knowing the magic universe, that's not a nail in the coffin. No, uh, okay, so uh, here comes the speculation. Mm -hmm. Like We went through the story, and brief story, you know, we lost. Um, here's the speculation. We know what planes might be invaded. Uh, Theros mm -hmm. is on the bucket list uh where uh alara huh. alara is on the list interesting yeah i was surprised with that so there's an ep there's a couple of epilogue stories mm -hmm. about other characters so you have um what's his face tezzeret that's his face mm -hmm. um tezzeret who's been working with the phyrexians to get a dark steel body mm -hmm. they give him a dark steel body at the end and then threaten to complete it essentially say well we'll just it'll take weeks to turn it into blight steel Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll take that time to complete you. Mm -hmm. And so he plays walks away. Uh, he's got a dark steel body. He goes home to uh -huh. Phyrexia, uh, not Phyrexia, to Alara, uh -huh. finds the Phyrexians are there, uh -huh. instructs a kid to go to the Bant, the angels of Bant, tell them they're being invaded. Because, you know, uh, he heard from uh, Elsbeth, I think, or from the Phyrexians, that the angels of uh, the angels of Capenna could uh, were able to hold off Phyrexians. Uh -huh. That's a good story, you know? Yeah. Um, and then we have Tefiri's epilogue, which is, uh, he ends up on Zafir. You know, his homeland that he banished for all eternity and is struggling with. Uh. Yeah. Um, the deep trauma, the reason why he's a brooding loner. Um, yeah, he ends up on Zafir, who used to be like a scholarly society, I think, but mm. now they're a warrior society because they've been training for the last 2,000 years to fight the Phyrexian. <laughs> so, uh, oh, by the way, the scholars have found a way to bring Zafir back, by the way. Oh. So, at least we have Zafir, who is ready to go to war with these things again. Yeah. Uh, keep in mind, Zafir was there for the original Phyrexian invasion. Oh. So, they know what they're doing? So I think Dominaria is going to be fine. Oh, yeah. But uh, Theros is screwed. Oh, yeah. Theros is, yeah. Um, I also think I saw a Hedron. So Phyrexians on Zendikar. <laughs> and um, I have a feeling that they're going to toss Innistrad in the mix. And one, you Here's my speculation. Emrakul has been waiting for the Phyrexians. Exactly. That's what I was just about to say. Okay. This we're going to get an I wouldn't be supposed to get a new Emrakul sometime soon. Okay. So... 
going back, um, uh, going back to the old older stories. Um, I know older stories. Mm-hmm. Shadows of over in a shroud. Uh, and uh, Eldritch Moon. Em- uh, Emrakul banished herself into the Silver Moon. Yeah. Uh, because we don't know why. We have no idea. We don't know if it's because her people weren't with the other two Eldrazi weren't with her mm-hmm. or she knew she wasn't supposed to be there or the plane wasn't ready for her or whatever. Because mm-hmm. we have no idea what the Eldrazi are. But if they toss Innistrad in the mix, you can bet that a moon is cracking right open and right. Emrakul's coming out. We're going to have... Uh... No, I'm not going to make the joke. Now, just consider, I don't think Eldrazi are something that Phyrexians can complete. No. No way. They're a hive mind connected to the blind eternals. That okay, I think that's enough story and speculation. Yeah. Let's let's actually get into the cards. Yeah, let's finally get into okay. the cards. Okay. So first of all, let's go through the cycles. Yep. Um wanna cover the Dominuses real quick. So Mondrak, the glory dominus, which is I'm they're all okay. colorless and their color. So the glory dominus is two white. And two colorless, or generic, if you will. Um, it's a Phyrexian horror. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, twice that many of those tokens are created instead. And then you have one generic, two for two white Phyrexian. Sacrifice two other artifacts and or creatures. Put an indestructible counter on the dom- on this dom. Yes, so he's an anointed procession. Um, they talk about this guy. Uh, and overall, the Dominus is what they're supposed to be is Phyrexia's idea of gods. Mm-hmm. Of completed gods. Yes. So Mondrak Glory Dominus is a Phyrex, the white Phyrexian god. He, he is, um, well, mm, that is a strong ability. Yeah, that's really strong. I, I like it. Another, another white token doubler. Well, he's going in a token deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tekuthal Inquiry Dominus. Flying, if you would proliferate, proliferate twice instead. Uh, one, two Phyrexian. Uh, remove three counters from among other artifacts, creatures, and planeswalkers. Put an indestructible counter on. I found a card that's going on your attractor deck. That is good for like token strategy for counter strategies. Oh yeah, Super Friends has a. It's got a couple of new toys in this set. Uh, this guy is one of them. Yeah. If you would proliferate, proliferate twice instead. Yeah, that is really good. That is really good. Okay. Then you have uh, Dreadnought, the Corners Dominus. This one's the black one, and this one's actually three generic and two black. That's more the expensive. Two. Yeah, he's more expensive. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability from a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an extra time. And this one, but the Phyrexian mana cost is less. Okay. It's, it's just two black Phyrexian. Exile three creature cards from your graveyard, put an indestructible counter on the Dominus. Okay, Um, I'm going to talk about so, Glory Dominus was a 4 4. Hecothul was a 3 5. Rivenod. Is an eight three. Um, his I don't think his ability is super strong. It's not. So it's good for graveyard like graveyard strategies like Marin, uh, Clan Neltoth or Mildrotha, where you want a bunch of death triggers. Yeah, exactly. But it, to put an indestructible counter on him, exiling three creatures from your graveyard. That's that's a high cost. Yeah, unless, unless unless they're like trash creatures, like one ones. Yeah, but usually you don't want to be exiling stuff from your own graveyard. Yeah, exactly. Um, the other ones were like, yeah, remove three counters. Uh, sacrifice two artifacts or creatures. Simple. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Drivenod may be one of the weakest of them all. Yeah. I mean, they gave him a higher power, you know, higher, between the higher cost, the easiness to ease of killing him, mm-hmm. um, and the bad Phyrexian ability. Someone's going to find a use for him, whether it's good or not. Yeah, they're never going to use that second ability, but they no. might just stick him in graveyard decks for that additional death trigger. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Zolfin, Mayhem Dominus. If a source would deal damage, uh, would deal non-combat damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals double that damage to that player or permanent instead. Discard two cards, one, two, two Phyrexian. Discard two cards, put an indestructible counter on it. So, uh, grape shot anyone? Last one the sack for twenty six. <laughs> like doubling non-combat damage is really good for spell slinger decks. Oh yeah. So he's got play in like a bunch of spell slinger decks, mm-hmm. uh, chops, lightning bolts, anything like that. All of a sudden, dealing a massive amount of damage. Oh yeah. Uh, and it specifies non combat damage, and so there's a number of different things. So for instance, maybe I build a fire song and sun speaker deck just to have him in there. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
The Pendril. The Hunger Dominus. This one's more, way more expensive. This is five generic and two green. But his ability is worth it. So he has reach as being of each at the beginning of each combat. Double the power and toughness of each creation's roll until end of turn. He is a Ronus God Eternal on every combat. Yeah, that's really good. I think that's worth seven man. Yeah, and then he has the, the Dominus ability. Yeah, which Dominus is... two Phyrexian sacrifice two creatures. Easy. That is easy in green. Oh, yeah. You're sacrificing tokens. You're sacrificing anything. That is super easy. He also has reach. Yeah, reach is... He's the only one other than Ten Tenthro that has a static ability like flying, and he's got reach. Uh-huh. He's a 4-6, so he's a good blocker. Seven mana is a little high, but that ability, man. That ability is really good. That ability is so good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the other cycle in this set is the Twilight Cycle. Yes. So the Twilight Cycle is born out of the Zenith Cycle. In the Scars and Mirrodin block, we had the Zenith Cycle of the Suns. Mm-hmm. And now we have the, there's the Suns Twilight. And these are all going to be X in their cost. Yep, X and then whatever color. For instance, uh, White Suns Twilight, two white mana, X. You gain X life. Create X 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrexian might artifact creature tokens with Toxic 1, and this creature can't block. If X is five or more, destroy all creatures, all other creatures. I think you just find a way to kill everyone. That is strong. Black white deck with this and Braska. This guy, White Sun's Twilight, is super strong. Uh, so it combines two. It, it's a Martial coup. Yeah. Which was similar. A Martial coup was three white and X. Mm-hmm. Create X one one soldiers, and then if X is five or more, destroy all other creatures. Mm-hmm. And those were just 1-1 one, one soldiers. Yeah. This is 2 white and X, and you create a bunch of toxic creatures. They can't block. You just wrath. So you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. You're going to have these guys to swing out next turn. Yeah, you're going to kill someone. Somebody's going to die. Mm-hmm. Toxic is such a strong ability. It's even better if you do, uh, do a white, red, black. And There's so much. Like, the, the, this one would be perfect. I'm thinking of this combo, because what you do is you get an Aurelia and Braska, and this. Do five or more. And you can just kill someone. Yeah, so... If you do ten, you can kill people in one. This is such a strong ability. Yeah. Um, like, the... That's a... This, that this can look, go in any white. Oh, yeah. It's that good. Yeah. Okay. Blue Sun's Twilight. So, this one's the blue, obviously. Um, gain control of target creature with mana, mana value plus or less. Take this five or more. Create a top... And create a token with a copy of that creature. So... This steals a creature. Uh, in the early game, it lets you steal one of their little creatures. Mm-hmm. In mid game, it'll let you take one of their big creatures and copy it. Yep. That versatility is what that versatility in these cards, where they have an effect with five or more, makes them really good because they have dual uses. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, you could you could steal someone's haymaker. You could, if you even wanted to, you could steal an Avacyn. Honestly, I think the blue one is uh, the weakest of them. I think yeah, you're right. Is one of the weaker ones. Uh, stealing one creature. For that, for seven mana, isn't that good? Especially when we have, like, Agent of Treachery who can come in, steal a creature, and then you can flicker him to do it again. Um, okay. Black Sun's Twilight. So this one's one black and X. Up to one target creature. Up to one, this one's, I think this one's actually the weakest. This one is at instant speed, though. That That's the good thing about this. This one's at instant speed. I think that's what, and it's only one black and X. Yeah, it's negative X, negative X until end of turn. If X is five or more, return your creature card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Tap. That second ability is why I don't think it's the weakest one. Yeah. Because mid game, you're killing a haymaker for like six or seven mana because most of them are five, five, six, sixes. You're mm-hmm. killing them and then bringing a threat back from your graveyard. Mm-hmm. That is decent. I don't think it, it's situational. A lot of graveyard decks will play it mm-hmm. but I in Commander, but I don't think it's going to see wide play, mm-hmm. uh, especially when you have like Toxic Deluge. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, Red Suns, Twilight. This is one of the weaker ones, too. Destroy up to X target artifacts. If it's five or more, for each artifact destroyed uh, this way, create a copy, a token that's a copy of it. Those tokens gain haste. Exile them at the beginning of the next hand step. Yeah, that one. Well, it's good for killing artifact creatures, but that's about it. That's about it, yeah. And we have Green Sun's Twilight. This one's another single green and X. Um, reveal the top X plus one cards of your library. Choose two cards from or a land card among them. Those cards in your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. Five or more, the chosen cards on the battlefield instead of your hand. And the rest on the hand. That's actually good in that's, Commander. Yeah, that's really good. Like, you, okay, you're going to be casting this for five of them. Yeah. 
uh, you get if you hit a creature and a land in that set, you're putting them both on the field. Exactly. Uh, and it doesn't care the mana cost of the creature. Haymaker decks are gonna love this. Oh yeah. Um, that like as far as like cycles go, that's all the cycles except for they added to an older cycle. Uh, in the artifacts, you have the Sword of Forge and Frontier. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from red and from green. Whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play those until the end of the turn. You may play an additional land this turn. It's the weaker of the swords. But it finishes the cycle. But it helps with, to finish the cycle. I don't know if it's the completion of the cycle or if it's like we're one away, but mm -hmm. we're close. Yeah, we're really close. Okay, those were the cycles in the set. Mm -hmm. Um, Good cycles. Like, Dominus is really strong. Twilight's useful. Um, As far as seal. Planeswalkers, obviously. We're yeah. we're not, and like Elish Norn, obviously. Mm -hmm. We're we're not talking about them because they're like yeah, those are those are uh, those are things that people are hunting for. Yeah. Um, because they're so good. Elish Norn, you know, is a panharmonicon. Yeah. And a hush land. It, it she's good. Um. Okay, but in in uh sealed, what you're looking for, uh, if you pull it and you want to build cards around. Phyrexian Obliterator, man. I cannot believe this thing is back in standard. Four black. Five, five, trample. Whenever a source deals damage to Phyrexian Obliterator, that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents. So, essentially, you put this thing out in sealed, and you're swinging for five damage every turn because your player's not going to want to block this. Yeah. They're going to be trying to kill this. Thing. Yep. The other, like, major sealed card, and the reason Chris isn't talking, he doesn't really play sealed. I don't play sealed at all. Like, very rarely, because I suck at it. Uh, Tyrannix Rex. We got a Phyrexian Dinosaur, finally. Uh, this spell can't be countered. Trample, Ward 4, Haste, Toxic. It's an 8-8. Or for a 4, green, green, green. That's an expensive, expensive ones, but games in sealed go long. And if this thing hits the field, your the enemy player is going to try to block this thing with as much as they can. Yep. Because toxic four, you cannot afford to take four poison counters when this thing hits. No. Um, you cannot. So it's an eight eight two. So it and it has trample. So you, they can't just block with one. They need to block its entire power. Yeah. They need to block to kill it, or they're taking four poison. Mm -hmm. And then this thing's swinging at them next turn too. Yep. The issue, the big problem is the ward. Mm -hmm. Very little re uh removal in sealed, and ward. Kills it. Yep. Uh, because now, now it costs four more. The other one um, is Phyrexian Vindicator. Uh, if damage would be dealt to Phyrexian Vindicator, prevent that damage. When damage is prevented that way, it deals that much damage to any other target. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Yeah. Even yeah. With, when he's being blocked, too. Mm -hmm. uh, as always, like the Planeswalkers are good. Um, Filigree Silence has its uses. But overall, the set's going to be balanced for sealed. A lot in here that can go well and go or go wrong. So, sealed is going to be interesting. There's yeah. so much here. Yeah, there's way too much. Okay. Cycles, sealed, our cards. The reason why we didn't talk about the planeswalkers is because for our picks that we like in this set, we got to talk about some of the planeswalkers first. Oh, there's. I love the planeswalkers in this. Vraska is probably one of my favorites. Oh man, Baraska Betrayal's Sting is so strong. This is probably one of my favorite. This is like I've always loved Baraska, but I never played decks with her because I can never find a Baraska. That that's like playable. That's playable. This one is definitely playable. This is really good. This would be really good in like prolific deck. Oh man, this thing's just good. Or even just like an infect deck. Anything. This thing can be. If, well, if you're playing an infect deck, people already hate you anyway. Yeah. Um, this one. Her, one for one black for and one regular black and multi generic. Um, completed all the uh completed just means if you pay the Phyrexian mana with life, yeah. it answers with two fewer uh, loyalty counters. Um, she doesn't have a plus one. She proliferates herself. Her zero is you draw a card, you lose one life. Proliferate. <laughs> so it's a Phyrexian arena that proliferates itself. Yep, and then negative two target target creature becomes a treasure artifact. Artifact. Um, add one man of any color. 
creature loses all other types and abilities. This is this is a really good way. That is a screw you. I'm That's a screw you to any haymaker. Okay, so this is like the Oko ability. Yeah. Similar to like the Oko Elk ability, which was really strong. Because th- what, what this does in Commander is it doesn't kill the creature. No, it makes it useless. No, it turns it into a trigger, which means they have to sacrifice it on their mana. Yep. Uh, so they either got to sacrifice one mana, their mana, that free mana that you give them to get their commander off the field, or they have to just sit there with that trigger. Um, overall, like Braska is, and then her negative. Oh, I, nine. I didn't get, I didn't get to her negative nine. Her negative nine is, is target player has fewer than nine poison counter. You get the difference. So they got. So it's essentially target player has nine poison counter. Yep, and then you proliferate everyone's poison counter for each turn. Oh well, yeah, and then somebody dies. No, everybody dies. It's target player. Oh, it's target player. Okay. Yeah. So not a strong. Yeah. But uh, another like strong one that will will probably actually see play is Jace the Perfected Knight. Yeah. Um, two, one blue, one Phyrexian completed. Uh, plus one, one target creature gains negative three, negative zero. Nobody's gonna use it for that. Target player milks three cards, then if Graver hits 20 more cards, you draw three cards, otherwise you draw a card. Eh, not very strong. Negative X. Target player mills three times X cards. <laughs> uh, you play him for four, he enters with five, target player mills 15. Um, Self-mill deck, love it, because they're just going to hit themselves with it. In sealed, you're going to play this thing, you're going to take out, like, half a player's deck. Yeah. Um, uh, That might even just cause him to be like, yeah, I'm... Next game. Okay, yeah. Um, depending on what you hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other completed planeswalker we got to talk about is Nissa. She's the strongest of them. Oh yeah. Okay. Three green, green Phyrexian Phyrexian. Now here's what's interesting about completed. So it can be p- for each Phyrexian that is paid with life. It get, it enters with two fewer counters. So if you pay uh five instead and four life, she'll enter with three counters instead. Mm-hmm. So you want to pay the full cost for this. You want to pay the full seven. Yeah. Um, plus one, create an XX green Phyrexian horror creature token where X is Nyssa Ascendant Animus Loyalty. You pay seven, you get a seven, seven. Well, eight, eight. You get an eight, eight. Negative one, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Yeah. Pretty good negative one. Straightforward. Mm -hmm. Until end of turn, creatures you control get plus one, plus one for each forest you control and gain trample. That's her negative seven. That's her negative seven. Even my she enters with seven. That's good. That is a good planeswalker. She won't see playing like uh, modern or anything. No, but... commander. That's a that's a really good one for a green deck. Yeah, green decks are gonna love her. Um, okay. Other cards that like just to talk about um that we saw. So, Iker Moon Gauntlet. Two and blue, planeswalkers you control have zero proliferate, and negative twelve take an extra turn after this. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, choose a counter on target permanent, put an additional counter of that kind on that permanent. Why? That is a toy. That is, that is definitely a toy. That is scary. That is so good for Planeswalker decks. Uh, the, like, oh yeah, your Planeswalkers have flat zero proliferate. You get two Planeswalkers, now everything's got a plus two. Mm. Things are scary. Yeah. And then a, a negative 12, like if Planeswalkers don't normally have a negative that you want to use free negative twelve, you take an extra turn. That yeah, that'd be really good for a super nice deck. It's gonna see a lot of play. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, they reprinted Phyrexian Arena, mm-hmm. which isn't bad. Then you got Encroaching Microsynth, which is a Microsynth lattice just for yourself. Mm-hmm. All of your stuff are artifacts now. Yeah. Um, not the best, not bad. Uh, we can talk about Nahiri. Yes, we can talk about Nahiri. It's not the best, but her card art is amazing. That art of like her with her stone forge blaze as arms. Um until end of turn up to one target creature attacks a player each combat. Plus one, discard a card, then draw a card. Exile creature equipment from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of it that gains haste, exile at the beginning of next end step. It's okay. It's not the, the art is so much better than it should than the creature. Yeah. Than the card, yeah. A lot of this is this set is kinda of, look how they butchered our girl. Like, there's a lot of problems, like, in, like a lot of, like, we, we finally see, like, how Phyrexia, and how Phyrexia has gone bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, how bad new Phyrexia has gotten. The Mirans are losing. They're barely scraping by, and we've seen a lot of people complete. You know, we got Rhea Ivor, Bane of Bladehold. She used to be the savior of Bladehold. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
beginning of combat on your turn. At the beginning of combat on your turn, the next time target creature would deal combat damage to one or more players, this combat prevent that damage. Damage is prevented that like create that many colorless Phyrexian might creatures with toxic blood. And they can't block. Phyrexian mites can't block. Mm -hmm. Hey, can we, <clears throat> can we also talk about how they murdered our girl at Jackson? I don't think they murdered... Well, it's not, it's not as good as... No. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. So, Shrexian. So, four colors... All four all color, all four colors except for red. Flying, Vigilance, Death Touch, and Life Touch. When a Shrexian Grand Unifier enters the battlefield, we reveal the top ten cards to the library. For each card type, you may put a card from that type among the revealed cards on two... Into your hand. Into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library and random. Meh. Here's the thing. They... They took away her old proliferate. Thing. Yeah, because there's a lot of proliferate in the battle. Right? Yeah, they don't need a proliferate, proliferate twice. Yeah. They don't need the original Atraxa in, like, modern or oh, no. legacy no. or standard. They don't need that. <laughs> um, But they made her a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah. Uh, With flying, vigilance, death touch, and life touch. Mm -hmm. A 7-7. Seven, seven. Now... Of the planeswalkers that I've been talking about, we haven't talked about Kaya. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Kaya can be completed. Also, we did miss the cycles. Oh, which one? The skull bombs. Uh, they're not super good. They're just spell bombs. Yeah, but uh, still, it's a it's gonna it's another cycle. We're not looking for just to cover everything. We're looking for like overall. We're already running a little bit longer, so let's just cover a couple more of like cards that we're like, oh yeah, keep an eye out for this one, or it has more uses than you think. Kaya, Intangible Slayer. Three, two white, two black. Hex she has Hexproof. Mm. Planeswalker with straight Hexproof. Uh, target opponent loses three life and you gain three life. Draw two cards and each opponent may scry one. Exile for creature and enchantment. If it wasn't an aura, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 1-1 one -one spirit and with flying in addition to its other types. Yeah. I'm going to take out your creature. It's fine now. And then, uh, Azuri. Oh my gosh, the new Azuri. Take a look at how they butchered my boy. Find him. So he's four mana, just like he was before. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's a Phyrexian elf warrior. When he enters the battlefield, you may pay three. If you do, proliferate twice. Whenever you proliferate, draw a card. No. It's good. It's good, but it's not as good. His old ability was... I don't think he was a Phyrexian. At, well, he was becoming a Phyrexian. He was like Azuri Blade of Progress or something like Bane that? Bane of Progress. Bane of Progress? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Mm. Mm. Man, our editor's gonna hate me. Shit, I'm our editor. <laughs> uh, don't worry, no one can hate me more than I hate myself. He he's not as good, but he has a better ability overall. Yeah. Um. He's not a broken commander like that commander was. Keep in mind, he was only in a commander set. Yeah. Uh, and he was in the same set of like Marin of Clan Nahal, so mm -hmm. it was a broken set. Yeah. Um. Okay. If you're looking to stem the tide of poison, Malira the Living Cure. One green, one white for a three three. If you would get one or more poison counters, instead you get one poison counter, and you can't get additional poison counters this turn. Exile Melina Living Cure. Uh, cure. Oh. oh, sorry, my page just turned. Um, well, you Exile read the Exile Malina the Living Cure. Choose another target creature or artifact. When you put it into the graveyard this turn, return that card to the battlefield under its own control. You can save something. Yeah. Like, that well, could be a fun commander. It costs the exile, though. I can see it being good in standard. In commander, no. No, I could see it good as in commander. If you're running Malira as the commander. That's very fair. Because she exiles herself for that ability. Uh -huh. You save that other creature. So uh -huh. you can... you Fire next turn. And then you just cast her from the command zone. Yeah. Fair enough. I think, I think it has use. I kind of want to build a Malira, the Living Cure. That'd be really fun. Just totally anti-poison counter. <laughs> anti-poison counter. Because, okay, here's the thing about Infect and Commander. Nobody likes Infect. Yeah. Um, but, Infect, um, Infect ha doesn't get seen very often because the cards are getting harder to find. Mm -hmm. 
So now we have toxic to deal with. And a lot of toxic. A lot. Commander is already toxic. Yeah. But um. Um, okay, artifacts. Uh not many good artifacts, but staff completion. Three, uh tap it, pay one life, destroy target permanent, you own. Mm. Own. You own. Yeah. I mean in in uh Actually that'd be really good to kill a veteran exploder. Yeah, well it's good not just good to kill like uh stuff you want killed, but if you're playing a deck that hands stuff off to people, you've got a free out. Uh you know that also is good for? Huh. False prophet decks. False prophet decks. <laughs> Screw you, exile all permanents. Uh all non land permanents. Uh pay two life, add one mana. Not very good. Pay three life proliferate. Pay four life, draw a card, five untapped staff of completion. It's not as good as staff of domination, but it's good I wonder if they're trying to make a cycle out of it. Yeah. Also, as always, the alternate arts are amazing. Oh man. Okay, that was all the cards to talk about, but yeah, we gotta go through those alternate arts. The Praetors. A and like ink, ink style cards that they did, those are so good. Yeah. Uh, they kind of give it off this like interesting look. Oh, they did Warren Flex. Uh, no, it's not a new oh, Flex. It's a reprint. Hard. Yes. Okay. So the Praetors have alternate art. Um, in this, they have two different alternates. They they haven't been reprinted in this set, but they gave them. So you see those ones that kind of look kind of wacky. Yeah. Um, they kind of don't look. Like they're fully realized, they kind of look old. Yeah, those are concept art. So back in, and this wasn't; these aren't the concept arts for uh for like the Phyrexians. Now these are the original concept arts from when they were produced back in New Phyrexia. Interesting. So that's what kind of the idea was when they were making it. And then of course they had to reprint the Phyrex like Praetors, the new Praetors, Progress Tyrant. And all of them in their like all arts, mm -hmm. and then they have the like, of course the other one they have. Um, so they have like concepts of if they were uh, if the planeswalkers had succumbed to Phyrexia. Yeah. Um, so alternate arts where even if they're not completed, they they gave them like arts as if they were, which is cool. Uh, and they got like Japanese artists to do a lot of them. Yeah. So that is like overall this set is great. The, I love the aesthetic of Phyrexia. I do too. And I think they knocked it out of the park with this one. Yeah. I, I just like how they do, how they capture the essence of like, hey, these are horrors. These are horrors. These are evil. Like, you, you see these guys and your skin crawls. Yeah. Them. Like, that's every time I see like a Phyrexia, I'm like, yeah, they don't look right. That That's the point. They're not supposed to look right. And they nailed it. Yeah. So. I'm like, everyone's like, yeah, Phyrexians are ugly. No, yeah, they're supposed to be ugly. They're Phyrexians. Not gonna lie, they're probably real. All right, so after covering the cards and the art and absolutely nothing else that we definitely cut out. Absolutely nothing. We covered absolutely nothing after that. We cut it out. We we didn't cut anything out. There's no interesting cuts that you'll find there. Um, I'm, nothing, nothing about a specific rule. Uh, I'm your host, Isaiah. <laughs> We're logging out before we say something we regret. <laughs>